everyone. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Anton, and today's request is from Mans, who is bringing Darren Hayes back on the channel, this time Insatiable, which you guys have literally been asking for, for I think, not gonna lie, two years. Um, I think ever since we did Sabs Garden, my very first Sabs Garden reaction ever to the moon and back, I think a lot of you wanted Insatiable. So, yeah, let's get into this one. So sit back, relax, and let's get into Darren Hayes' Insatiable. Oh my god, he has long hair, man. I love that guitar. Classical guitar. Just Darren making sexy noises. outros Fini. all right so that was darren hayes insatiable so uh 
Yeah, one thing that was like going through my head when I was listening to this is just how diverse uh, Darren's Darren's uh, music is. And like, you know, at the same time, it's not that incredibly diverse. It's like it always kind of stays in this like, you know, pop, sensual, like this, this has a bit of like a Spanish feeling to me. You know, that, 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 that's what this has to me is like a bit of a Spanish feeling. It's, I think it's that just the guitar. Um, but I don't know if I'd call this R and B is, is this, is this R and B? Um, or is this just like sensual atmospheric pop music? Like that's the difficulty about pop is that it kind of means so many things. Cause like nowadays pop is like EDM. It's like electronic dance music, right? There's no sensuality. Like it's just pure catchiness. Where before, like this might be just pure pop, but because it has that kind of Spanish influence, the the rhythm, the groove, the sensuality, it kind of reminds me a bit of like Babyface or um, I think that's what I was kind of picking up. So I'm like, yeah, R and B. I I think would that be accurate? I I don't know R and B enough to know if that's the influence here. But there's something. And I think it's like, yeah, because Babyface is R&B, right? And I think this has like a little bit, like I find this one and the Babyface reaction we did in some sense have kind of a similar um, instrumental, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong. But from what I remember, they have a bit of a similar, a bit of a similar vibe. But this one's definitely more sensual, uh, to my recollection at least. And, and that's just Darren. Darren has such a a sensuality to him um now overall i like this one quite a bit it's not my favorite darren hayes song it's not my favorite savage garden song um and then and and then again i know this one will grow on me because already i like this one i enjoyed this thoroughly the entire way through it's just it didn't like blow me away like you know look at my to the moon and back reaction like that song blew me away you know what i mean that one just hit me right exactly where I like I am so resonant where this one this one it didn't hit me and like excite me to the same degree but it was it did something different which is I think different music does different things to you like this again I was like brought into the groove the sensuality of this one sure the hook didn't blow me away like some of the other hooks I'm used to but it did something different. It just, it pulled me into a vibe that is just so insatiable. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like the vibe it brings you into is just beautiful. So again, this is more of a vibey song. And also on subsequent listens, the chorus melody itself might just kind of lock into place with my ears. And I might end up loving it. Like this happened exactly to uh, Lover After Me by Savage Garden. Same thing happened. First listen, I liked it, didn't love it. Now it's literally one of my favorite songs on the record. So these things happen a lot, you know? And this is, as I always say, one of the challenges with doing first listen reactions is that all you have access to is my first reaction. You don't have my fifth reaction, which in some says some sense, like the third to fifth time I listen to a song, that's when everything kind of starts to fall into place, usually three to five times. So... One thing I plan on doing with this channel, actually, um, in the future, you know, when I like this is literally a five to ten year plan. But like when I have like kids one day, OK, this is actually a 15 year plan because th my kids would have to be like 12 years old, probably. But like I, I, I plan if I'm still doing music reactions in like 15 years, 20 years, I want to do them with my, my children, like my son or my daughter or whatever. Like I'd love to kind of. In some sense, I'd love to introduce them to the, my favorite songs on this channel. Like the, the songs that have blown me away that maybe I grew up with or the songs that I've been blown away with on this reaction channel. When I have kids, I'd love to introduce them to that same music and do a first time reaction with my children and, and kind of show them something themselves. Like I think that'd be very cool. I think that'd be very inspiring to me. I think that would be such a natural uh, shift in the channel, I think. To do it just to do it with them like i just think that would be very exciting yeah I'd give it a new dynamic and at that time i'd be so I, i'd be so much more um 
uh, not the word successful, it's obviously successful, but, um, established, I'd be so much more established that like, I'd have like a, you know, a full-time editor. Cause you know, to, to anyone who knows it fell out with the editor, I wasn't able to secure the editor for $48,000 a year, which is wild. But, uh, yeah, so I'm still, I'm still kind of looking for an editor, but like, yeah, as this channel, as you know, I become more successful and everything starts coming in, like I'd love, you know, my, my vision for this channel and my podcast in general is just like extremely high production quality. Just have like a full time editor that just throws on graphics on the screen, transitions, um, very creative things. Like even in some sense, like you know, like one thing that's so cool that you'll get sometimes with um, like YouTube videos that are done really well is when they're talking about something, there will be a cut, a transition, and what they're talking about, if there's a clip from a TV show, a movie, a, a photo, a video, like, they'll, like, pan that as I'm speaking. Like, that's just something that, like, that takes such an enormous amount of time, like, just an enormous amount of time to just kind of be able to quickly sink into that kind of stuff. So that's, like... In a, in a year, maybe even less, you know, especially if everything starts to really take off in six months, like six months to a year, I could easily just do all that because at that point, an editor would probably be like a hundred thousand dollars a year, probably, probably 50 to a hundred thousand to do the podcast and YouTube stuff at the same time. Like it's going to be wild. So I would be having to make like 200 to 300 to $500,000 a year, which is the plan. It's going to happen. It's just like, the timeline is like when, right? <clears throat> but yeah, that's why I just perceive happening is like, <clears throat> just again, really jumping into this angle with the channel of it being like a show. You know what I mean? Like a theme of the, like every week we have a new season. Like I, I think what I'll end up doing is calling these things seasons, um, seasons. And then, yeah, like again, because these things will be like 20, usually my reactions are 15 to 30 minutes long. Um, average would be 15 to 25. Like that's like an, an episode of a TV show, right? Like that's like an episode of the office or how I met your mother. Right. And so, you know, rather than pumping out so much content, like a lot of people in the reaction community, we pump out like seven pieces to 14 pieces of content a day, a week. Um, I'd rather do less, but really get like quality production and make it like every episode is an episode rather than these throwaway things. I, I, again, as my creativity catches up to, or as my ability to harness my creativity catches up to my creativity, um, I'd like to just change it. And again, the cool thing about editing is once you get an editor, it changes the way you perceive your art. Like right now, I it's hard for me to break out of the mentality I have for my art when I don't have an editor because I'm locked into doing reactions in a certain way. There's a, there's a there's a a limit to the kind of experiences I can create. Once you get an editor, you can actually create much more dynamic experiences. And once you figure out you can do more dynamic experiences, your creativity just explodes, and you start to go, "Whoa!" Like now that I have all this access to do all of these things things start to jump out that you never knew were possible and, and ideas will come. So I, I see it in six months to a year, again, doing three pieces of content every week, but like that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like that being just so much more of a big deal. You know what I mean? I want every episode to be, to feel special and I want to really target the same of the week thing into even more dynamic areas where like, you know, really getting into that, like, you know, maybe researching an era before we do reactions or something. Um, you know what I mean? Like it depends what it would look like, but I want to do something that for all of the viewers, for the, the, the viewer experience is again, like a syndicated TV show, something like holistic, something that you're almost like, I, that's what I want. I want this to be a mixture of entertainment and education. That's actually, that's actually, I think, I think that's where my creativity is going, but I haven't been able to articulate it before. I think that's where I want this channel to go is, is education and creativity or entertainment where the entertainment is the fun reaction, seeing me smile, excitement, laughter, all that kind of stuff. And then the education will be Again, I, I've reviewed so much music, and as I learn more about these eras and stuff, um, for anyone that doesn't know, it'll be like taking you on this like kind of historical educational journey through a time period, right? 
And then we'd be like doing like the three biggest hits of that time period. That could even be a thing too, is we like essentially do like the three biggest hits or three biggest artists of a decade. And obviously every time we return to a decade and era, we will kind of go lower down the totem pole. So we'll be like the three biggest artists, then the, the three, and you know, obviously you guys will be voting on all this stuff. It's not just going to be like, I'm telling you, but I kind of want it more of this, yeah, thematic journey um, through something, you know what I mean? And then we'll have the odd, uh, theme of the month which i've talked to some of you about that won't be a usual thing but every like i don't know maybe i'll do it every quarter right <clears throat> every three months i might do a theme of the the month and like i'll take like my four favorite themes of the channel which would probably be like 90s alternative 2000s rock radio rock hard rock um and like certain things like maybe 80s pop or 80s singer songwriter like peter gabriel sting kate bush um Brian Adams, Phil Collins, stuff like that. And then like <clears throat> those might be like every three months we do a theme of the month where we dive into specific artists more for the entire month. You know what I mean? Again, like I want to build the channel to be more dynamic from that standpoint and just make it way more exciting because already it's exciting to all of you. And I know it's super exciting to all of you, but I, I almost want to make it so it's excited. Like it blows me away. Like the idea of what I can create and how creative I can get with my art. Like, I want that to blow me away. Because if it blows me away, it, like, triple blows you away. Like, like right now, I, like, you know, I love what I do. This is a lot of fun. And for, it's a lot of fun for me. And you guys love it. So if I get to the point where I'm blown away, you guys will be, like, just insane. You know what I mean? Like, it will be just, <clears throat> again, I almost feel like in some sense, your enthusiasm to my art is in some sense double to triple what it is for me. Right. And again, that's a natural thing. I think that is with almost everybody. Even you talk to musicians and artists for us as artists, it's just like, yeah, this is what we do. But for you, it's like, it's this thing that lives and breathes and lives on way after I'm dead. Then when I'm dead, it becomes immortalized. You see this with Michael Jackson, Roxette. Anytime an artist dies, you notice their views kick up. They get their fan base just gets even more intense and powerful and because it's essentially you become immortalized and when you're no longer a human being you become deified into a god and then people worship your music or your art right and that'll happen to all of us that'll happen to me that'll happen to everybody who's an artist it just happens when you die if you're a good artist you become immortalized and so again i want the art i create to live on after i'm dead and and be like you know, The Office, you know what I mean? One of my favorite comedy TV shows of all time. But like, I want it to be see, like respected, not arrogantly, but just like respected as art. You know what I mean? Because again, the amount of effort and emotion and time and energy I put into this, I don't want it to be thr like thrown away and forgotten. You know what I mean? Again, because I love so much the art that lives on. I'm inspired by that and I'm inspired to do the same thing myself. You know what I mean? Like it's just, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it inspires me. I don't know how I got onto this at all, but I think it's probably because every time I react to Darren Hayes, I go in monologues. Every time I react to U2, Savage Garden, Darren Hayes, there's certain artists, Tori Amos always does this to me. Um, where for whatever reason, they just send me on these like thought trips, you know what I mean? These self-reflective, probably because Darren, his energy and his vibration is so introspective. Um, that's just kind of, he's so much more than just an introspective artist, but in some sense, one of his main patterns I pick up his his main vibratory patterns is introspection. He's in, one of the most self-reflective artists I've ever come across while also not losing himself within self-reflection. There's some artists and like you, you see this with like dead poets and dead authors where they're almost self-indulgently self-reflective, where it's almost like it has no connection to reality. The thing I like about Darren is his self-reflection still is firmly tethered to reality and we can all relate to him. There's some artists and like I said, poets where they're almost so self-indulgently self-reflective that you can't even really like connect with it. It's almost beyond you. It's almost, yeah, it's, it's beyond you. And that's what I love about Darren is that it's never actually beyond us as the connected viewer. You know what I mean? 
Uh, but yeah, let's actually uh, dive in and break down the lyrics of this one now. All right, and we're back with Darren Hayes, Insatiable. So obviously I made a comment halfway through this this video that I thought this was about his his insatiable lust of somebody as a stalker. Because again, the music video was portraying it as Darren was essentially like observing, stalking this actress who at first I thought was in a relationship with somebody, but then we realized they're they're both um, actors. You know what I mean? And so it's not actually, they're in a relationship. Darren is like observing. I think in some sense, what the video, and the video is different than the song, I believe, strongly, because there's some hints that we'll get into that they're telling different stories. But the music video, what I felt like is Darren is lustfully soulfully attracted to somebody it doesn't have to be bad it's just like he's just we've all been in this position where I, I know i have more when i was younger where i would watch like a movie and i would just feel this a very strong pull this attraction to a movie star someone in a movie right and it's just a weird kind of feeling because you don't know that person but you're like i feel so a lot of it is sexual. It's just like the sexual connection, the sexual energy you have with this person. And you don't really know what it is. And so what I pick up is Darren is having this kind of effect with this actress movie star. And <clears throat> and yeah, she's kind of observing him and, and sh he she's catching his eye, he's catching her eye. You know what I mean? But the, the lyrics, as we'll get into, I think is actually about a relationship. Um, or at least like a one night stand or something. But uh, when moonlight crawls along the street, chasing away the summer heat, footsteps outside somewhere below, the world revolves, I let it go. We build our church above the street. We practice love between these sheets. The candy sweetness scent of you and bathes my skin, I'm stained in you. And all I have to do is hold you. There's a racing within my heart and I am barely touching you. Yeah, so this is definitely likely a, a lust um, or trauma bonding relationship as I often talk about in, especially my videos a year ago, as I was kind of going through this myself. Um, but usually, again, you, you can have, you know, your heart racing with someone you actually love and you and you know a lot. That That's definitely part of it. But I think the... The, the level of racing is essentially, 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 essentially when you're in a relationship with somebody or you're having a one night stand where there's such an air of mystery between you that the mystery is intoxicating. A lot of the time, that's actually what's mostly intoxicating is the mystery. And once you, uh, these relationships usually break apart with time because the only thing keeping you cemented and glued to each other was the mystery, was the trauma bond, was the trauma you both have that you're locking keys for each other. Like most good relationships deepen with time. Most trauma bonded relationships, um, in some sense, they lose their pull over time. Um, and then especially the the exaggeration of this is relationships that are really only meant to be like one night stands or a couple months. Essentially, these are the relationships where essentially, especially if you're cheating on somebody, they have the most pull. And once you actually leave your partner and you get in with this person, this is that truly never happened to me. I've actually never been cheated on or cheated on somebody. But, you know, again, from what I've observed and what I can kind of feel when I feel into this, I think a lot of the time those relationships that are, there's cheating involved. It's like the mystery and the intoxication of this being a taboo thing cements you. And then once you leave somebody and you get with this person, you're like, what am I doing? This is no longer that much fun. You know what I mean? So I think think that's what Darren is talking about. I could be wrong though. Turn the lights down low, take it off, let me show. My love for you is insatiable. Turn me on, never stop, want to taste every drop. My love for you is insatiable. The moonlight plays upon your skin, a kiss that lingers takes me in. This is also interesting too, he's talking a lot about moonlight. Like there was one moment that this happened. So again, if this is true, it would uh, lend credibility to the theory that this is about a one night stand or a short lived relationship that is kind of mired in taboo or 
trauma bonding, that kind of thing, where it's like, it's very much about a moment. It's not about a relationship. It's about a moment. It's about an experience. It's about a couple experiences um, that tend to utilize the moonlight a lot. A kiss that lingers takes me in. I fall asleep inside of you. There are no words. There's only truth. Breathe in, breathe out. There is no sound. We move together up and down. We levitate. Our bodies soar. Our feet don't even touch the floor. Like, again, I just, I love Darren's imagery and uh, lyricism. I think he's just one of the best at it. You know, just, again, I, I've reacted to so much Darren Hayes at this point. And just every time, it just, it continues to impress me. Which is, again, the mark of a very good artist, is the consistency of their art. That, it seems like Darren is just an artist. He's just inherently consistent with his art. And he doesn't really have many um, filler songs. You know what I mean? It seems like everything, maybe not everything is a single, but everything has been crafted very meticulously. That's what I get from Darren. Um, like, I just, I, I like the rhyming schemes here. Our feet don't even touch the floor and nobody knows you like I do. Cause the world they don't understand, but I grow stronger in your hands. That's interesting too. Nobody knows you like I do. So again, this is either a continual relationship that still maintains this heat. Again, most relationships have a honeymoon period of one and a half years. That's usually the longest it takes for the the, the bonding chemicals, the oxytocin, the all of these different chemicals in the body to start to wear off. And that's when you usually look at your partner. If it's not a good relationship, you go, who the fuck did I get in a relationship with? And things start to break down. Also, if you're actually on... Um, <clears throat> if you're on the pill, when you get into a relationship, when you get off the pill, often you'll actually lose attraction to your partner, uh, potentially. This happens a lot. There's actually, I think, I forget the statistic, but it's a high statistic. Um, I think it's upwards of like 50% of relationships that they actually like pull people and the partner says, I don't really have sexual attraction on my partner anymore now that I'm off, now that I'm off the pill because they've done a lot of research on how the pill changes what women are attracted to actually so it's very interesting um, so that's something I think about if you get in a relationship with somebody when you're on the pill and then you want to get off the pill later it's just an interesting thing that a lot of people are starting to have issues with in society um <clears throat> Da -da 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 -da. We never sleep, we're always holding hands, kissing for hours, talking, making plans. I feel like a better man, just being in the same room. We never sleep, there's just so much to do. So much to say. Can't close my eyes e even when I'm with you. Can't close my eyes when I'm with you. Insatiable, the way I'm loving you. Mm. When I look into your eyes, insatiable, the way I'm loving you. Oh, what I can do. Insatiable for you. All right, so that was Darren Hayes, Insatiable. Overall, I really enjoyed this one. Again, not my favorite Darren Hayes song, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, especially the groove, the vibe. While the melody on first listen didn't capture and enrapture my heart the way that a lot of Darren's other ones did, overall, this song is great. I, you know, this is a great song. And I can definitely see why this could easily be someone's favorite. And I could even see this song becoming one of my favorites for specific moods especially if i want to be in like a sensual sexual mood i could definitely see this is like a yeah this is a making love song you know what i mean like this again i think if i listen to this in that setting i think this song would really spark to life and i would feel like oh that melody that chorus can't be anything but what it is it serves its perfect purpose within the vibe of what it wants because sometimes i think um i'm not as used to r&b and i'm not as used to this kind of music where it's less belting it's less yeah it's less belting um i was gonna say it's less passionate but it's not that's less passion it's just less belting um it's less sustained open notes and i think sometimes because pop and r&b have so much overlap in my years i sometimes crave that belting but it wouldn't work in R&B. And again, if I'm correct, this is more R&B influenced. And again, this is perfect for what it is. But what are your thoughts? Did you Is this one of your favorite Savage Garden Darren Hayes songs? 
Yeah, what are your thoughts on this one? Let me know down below. And obviously, we've done a lot of Darren Hayes and Savage Garden. So if you want to go on the Darren Hayes Savage Garden journey with me, click right here, and I'll see you in the next one.